Would you hire you? Maybe, maybe not. Would you hire me? Would you hire your friend? We'll talk about it right after this. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I uh, I've noticed that notifications haven't gone out yet, so there's that. But anyways, good morning. Hope all is well. Um, it is Friday. It is Friday the twelfth. I think the hundred and third day of the year. Um, I know that's fascinating, isn't it? So. Anyways, notifications are not going out, so there's that. So, YouTube has been janky here lately. Um, Eric, no, it's not even it either. It's like you do a live feed and then the notifications go out like four hours later. Yeah, see, it's 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 there. They just won't notify everybody. So, anyways, let's turn that down. Good morning. Hope all is well. We are live it's friday morning i know i just said that um we're gonna take a look at a couple of articles that i found and um i'm curious about this one new website i found it was a ad on instagram and then i used uh the evil ai to create a bunch of youtube shorts i don't know if i'm gonna release them or not i gotta tweak them a little bit because ai is not perfect so we'll see what that amounts to but um as you know that uh, it's it's been a light week for dispatch again. I did help one driver get out of Denver, get him to Phoenix where he needed to be, and um, then I've I've coached a couple of people this week. So so that's good. Um, helping people when I can, where I can, how I can. But then yesterday it was all about me. I had to work on my own dang self. I went and did the workout, and then I had uh, hours upon hours to deal with some tax stuff. So um, I had strayed from my system that I used for my tax accounting, and and it has bit me in the butt. So, but we're getting it, we're getting it uh, done. So. Um, we'll take a look. At, let's take a look at the weather real quick. Let's see what where all the warnings are at. I know that Pennsylvania, Ohio, and West Virginia are dealing with some uh, some flooding issues. I know that my scanner, police scanner app, was going off. Uh, some counties in Pennsylvania. So 
And it looks like we've got some red flag warnings. You should always have a red flag warning. Um, or no, that's a false flag warning. Never mind. But anyways, you got red flag warnings out here in New Mexico. New Mexico's being a little tipsy turvy. And then you got wind alerts going on in, um, what is that, Colorado. And then Utah's got some flooding going on. And then you got some, uh, what's going on there? Other high winds. You got a high wind watch here in uh, Nevada and part of California. They're around Elko. You got some severe weather outlook. So you got that going on. So it is that time of year. So, but other than that, nothing as far as winter weather. So we, well, actually, I take it back. Looks like California's got some, well, what's this? Winter weather advisory there through, uh, Oh, from Mariposa all the way down to Santa Maria area. So that whole section there is is under a winter weather advisory. So other than that, really it's been it's been kinda quiet. So so good. Nothing to really kinda talk about. Um let's see, what else? Um I wanna talk about this. Let's see. Let's get this article up here. This is this is why I tell you guys and gals to have your act together or at least be attempting to because the big companies are struggling. And this is an interesting list that they're going to talk about right here because notice it says logistics companies across the U.S., Texas, Florida, Illinois, Michigan, and Georgia firms say market conditions, loss of customers, forced job cuts. I'm not going to agree with that part 100%. I mean, I mean, I'm sure they say that, but we've all known that a lot of these companies will blame market conditions when the reality it was their management. And that's, that's kind of what I see that with single owner operators is that you know, they, they sit there and say, you know, they don't track their numbers. They're making bad decisions. They're sitting two or three days at the truck stop waiting for the perfect load. And and then when they go under, they blame market conditions. And, and I've been through small recessions as an owner-op. And there are ways to, you know, it, it, it hurts, but there are ways to manage through this uh through this climate here so let's read this uh this is from freight waves so thank you freight waves uh layoffs continue across the freight and logistics industry with companies in florida georgia illinois michigan and texas announcing job reductions and facility closures over the past two weeks universal logistics Warren, Michigan-based Universal Logistics is permanently shuttering two of its subsidiaries and laying off a total of 677 employees, according to notices recently filed with the state. The layoffs are related to Universal Operated Entities, Logistics Insight Corp., and Universal Dedicated out of Detroit, an auto parts warehousing and logistics facility. Both operations were in Detroit. Universal Dedicated of Detroit's closure will affect 230 truck drivers, who work from the facility Logistics Insight Corp's closure includes 164 warehouse workers, 212 forklift operators, 26 dock workers, and 45 clerical employees. Uh, Universal is a truckload transportation intermodal logistics provider across the U.S., Mexico, Canada, and Colombia. The company has more than 10,000 employees. It did not provide a reason for the cessation of operations in the two entities in their state filings. Officials for Universal Logistics did not immediately respond to requests for comment for, for, uh, from Freightways. Um, next one is Swissport Cargo Services, which they're a global cargo handler. It's laying off 235 workers um, at a cargo handling operation in Atlanta. The layoffs, which are related to losing a contract with e-commerce giant Amazon, are expected to be finalized May 22nd. So let's look at that. If if you have all your eggs in one basket, especially a basket as big as Amazon, 
Um, you think you're pretty secure. You think you're pretty safe, right? No, nope. there's no guarantees. You know, the, like when you open the DAT board, there's this big thing that says, we take the uncertainty out of freight. No, you don't. Because that's impossible. There is no such thing as un, you know, is there is no such thing as certainty in freight. Other than it's always got to move, and there are a thousand ways to do it. Um, let's see. It says we're always evaluating our operations to better serve our customers, and have made the decision to change vendors at Atlanta Hartsfield International Airport. Uh, Sam Stevenson, Amazon spokesperson, told FreightWaves, this will not impact customer deliveries in the Atlanta area. Amazon is working with incoming vendors to identify opportunities for impacted workers. On February 19th, Swissport announced it was laying off 378 workers at a cargo hand handling operation in New Li Newark Liberty International Airport. The job reduction was also related to losing a customer contract. Our customers decided to change its service provider and to terminate the contract, Swissport officials told FreightWaves. To our great regret, as a result of this decision, all 378 Swissport employees at Newark Airport will no longer be employed by Swissport. Now, here's an interesting one. The Kroger company. We always go, you know, we always complain about, you know, making deliveries at Kroger. You know, some Krogers are better than others. Or should I say worse than others, you know? And I'll get to the comments here in a minute here. Kroger announced recently it is cutting over 230 jobs and permanently closing delivery hubs in San Antonio and Austin, Texas, as well as Miami. The facilities operate as part of a Kroger Fulfillment Network, an e-commerce grocery delivery service for residential customers. The layoffs include 198 delivery drivers. Despite our best efforts, including the support from new customers, learnings from other locations, and the incredible work of our associates, these facilities did not meet the benchmarks we set for success. So here they were trying to do something different to adapt, and it they fell on their butts. RxO Logistics. Transportation Solutions Provider RxO recently announced it's laying off 114 employees in Warren, Michigan. The layoffs are from RxO Managed Transport, a subsidiary operating at an address. Uh, officials did not give a reason for the layoffs and a notice filed with the state. Officials for Charlotte, North Carolina-based RxO told Crane's Detroit business that the layoffs were related to the loss of a customer contract. The layoffs are expected to be finalized May 31st. NOSCO. Is another one. Packaging solutions provider Nosco is closing a facility in Carrollton, Texas, and laying off 51 workers. Company officials said the official facility's closure is related to the relocation of some operations to company headquarters in Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin. Carrollton facility will close permanently October 2nd. And then Rider Integrated Logistics. Uh, they are <clears throat> laying off 29 people from. A facility in Romeoville, Illinois, the job cuts, which are scheduled to be finalized April 30th, are due to the loss of a customer, according to state filings. Rider Integrated Logistics is a subsidiary of Rider System, Inc., a Miami-based leasing, fleet management, transportation, supply chain solution provider. So... Basically... You know, a lot of people are, are going after contracts, and as well he should, but just know that that contracts can can be taken from you just as easily as as, as anything else. So, you know, the, the platform of working the spot market only, you know, you have your pros and cons to that, but you also have the pros and cons of doing contract work. So and it's easy to get in a bind, like let's say you do you you sign a contract with the local shipper, and you're able to get more and more. So what do you do? You go out and buy ten trucks, or you go out and lease ten trucks and put drivers in them, and you know and that goes well for a year or two years, and then some other company like Werner or Snyder come in and say we can drop twenty trailers at your place, and and we've got. 500 drivers within a 20 mile radius of where your your company's at you know and and we could do it for you know 20 percent less 
and all of a sudden, boom, you're done, right? Now you got 10 trucks and you don't know what to do with them. You got 10 drivers that are relying on you. You don't know what to do with them. And I see that a lot here locally. Um, that I see it a lot. So we, you know, with the company I was with, we were one of uh, Bass Pro's uh, main trucking companies. We we were doing all their new stores. Like we were taking stuff to the new store. One time I was delivering before they built the store, as they were building the store in Leeds, Alabama, um, I delivered there and it was a mud pit and and it was I'm not wearing my hat today, so my headphones are struggling. But it was uh, I opened the doors up and there was palm trees in there, plastic palm trees and and half, like cut lengthwise of Richard Petty's NASCAR. So very interesting times. But the you know, then then one day Werner came in and said, We're gonna take over all of this. They kicked us out. They kept RBX minimally and rbx had to double up on some of their loads when they switched to e-logs because now things that were done in one shift now it took two shifts so i mean you know change is always happening and you got to be prepared for it you got to have the ability to adapt and overcome and it's easy to get complacent when you're doing the same runs all the time which you know i'm guilty of that so anyways let's get to the comments here uh we got 21 people in here thank you very much charity good morning uh, Ian MacArthur, good morning. Rock and Van Life, what's up? Shadow Wolf, I got one. Excellent. Uh, great title this morning. Good morning, Steve. We'll talk about the title. Very good. CDN, uh, Flatbed Trucker, good morning. Uh, CDN says, future topic, with more brokers only onboarding carriers with an MC, 8 to 12 months age, what are new MCs to do year one? That is a great, in fact, that reminds me. Um, I got a text yesterday, and I have not confirmed it, but I, I'm, I'm thinking it's legit. Uh, J.B. Hunt extended their authority requirement from the system, still saying 90 days, to actually be in 365 days. So J.B. Hunt, you now have to be, in, instead of three months, now you have to have an authority aged a year. And then Coyote has extended their authority requirement the same way their system is saying 30 days to actually be in eight months. Now, this was copy and pasted from an article, so it's probably legit. But Sage had sent me that, and I thought that was interesting. It, it you know, and I, I believe TQL is making some, some similar moves, which will affect a lot of new authorities. So getting your own authority right now is, is kind of a, like, like, you can get your own authority and have a direct customer. Like, that would be the way I would do it. But to do 100% brokered freight as a new one-truck authority, man, I, I th that's a tough gig. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is a tough gig, especially with the brokers um, battling each other and trying to undercoat each other for, for freight that a lot of them are, are doing right now. So, uh, Henry Duncan, good morning. Uh, Jackknife TV, good morning. Uh, pretty much flooding, just flooding in Pennsylvania right now. Uh, there's whispers at the Tyson DC. I'm all I'm at. Also, everyone is on edge to bringing in an efficiency management group. Jackknife, you are done. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not. I don't mean to laugh at you. I, I'm just. There's a, a, cons a consultation company called Lean Manufacturing, and there's different versions of this. It was originally started by Toyota back in the day. They figured out how to have less movements in a factory process, like how many times do you handle a particular item? How often do you have to walk across your aisle to get something? You know, and, and they, they, they pretty much revolutionized the automotive industry. That's why a lot of job layoffs happened was because they figured out that if we rearrange the building, create a system, do just-in-time kind of freight management so you don't have to have big warehousing, it becomes a well-oiled machine, 
and you can do the work of 20 people with 10. And I've been laid off from jobs three times because of this system. And my wife, where she works, had similar, um, you know, in office environment, had similar issues. And so whenever, so what's going to happen is, is if they're bringing an efficiency management group, that means that they're, what they do is they come in and they, they just watch everybody work. And they're going to say, okay, you could do this better. You could do this better. This could be more efficient. This could be more efficient. Set this all up. So your jobs are safe for a minute. And then once it's set up, some guy with a notebook is going to come in and point at different spots that are unnecessary and off you go. And it, it, it reduces costs. It reduces uh, time. It increases volume. And next thing you know, you're without a job. And, uh, yeah, so I, I've lived that. that. That's from personal experience. And it sucks. And so if Tyson's looking to do that, that means they're trying to cut costs as much as they possible much as they possibly can which is you know which is what everybody should be doing and and i imagine they're going to be taking a hard look at who's transporting their freight they're going to look at their own trucks they're going to look at their own fleet and they're going to look at fleets like yours so it's it's you know and and so if they can minimize a few things that could affect your miles and your your freight so so just a word of warning, Jackknife, that is not good news. My name is Nobody. Good morning. Uh, Pop-Tart, hi. Hey, you all. Hey, y'all. Uh, Google News said last night RxOs opened 32 terminals formerly owned by Yellow. It's hard to see through the fog. It is. You know, it, you, you, you read some articles and you think that our economy is – you know, expanding, and then you read some articles, and it's the apocalypse. Somewhere in the middle lies the truth. And so, I, you know, so what, what I do is I look at that RxO, and I look at this RxO, and I think, okay, well, there's at least some dynamic changings happening. And so I imagine what they're doing is they're taking those people out of Michigan, and they're putting them somewhere else. So... You know, there's a lot of changes happening, and that's that's the whole point. is is It's constantly changing, and you have to be you have to be savvy to it to to figure out where and when you need to go next. And don't get complacent if you got a contract, because all these layoffs that I mentioned, most of them were because of one customer, because they had their eggs all in one basket. So CDN says, Jackknife, I think it was Steve read the article that the key for companies to survive is they need to be lean and efficient. Yep. Just stoking. Good morning, Steve. No hat, but coffee. Yes, we have the coffee. And it is, it is delicious berserkers brew that you can get at contentcreatorcoffee.com. It is really good. I love it a lot. Mm. So there you go. There's my coffee promo. <laughs> promo. Uh, well, I'm in some mess and I don't know what to do, but smile and know it. it's going to be all right. There you go. What kind of mess you in? Your daughter is suing you. Wow. XPO Logistics also took over several YRC terminals. I thought RXO and XPO were the same company. Maybe I'm wrong. End times might get a second interview after you cut that beard. Cool. Cool. Uh, CDN. This is Jackknife. Uh, CDN. Imagine how the carrier market would change if every broker had a one-year requirement. Well, see, if they would have done that. Think about this, though. It's out of necessity, right? So if they would have done that two years ago or a year ago, when there wasn't enough trucks on the market, they, you know, that wouldn't have happened. Um, you, you know, you know, I remember talking to brokers, you know, with new carriers and they were saying like, oh, you know, you're only at three months, but we'll make an exception for you, you know, that kind of thing. 
So it's it's they're trying to filter the bad carriers out is what they're doing. So and they can because the capacity is in the broker's favor. Uh, Randy says, good morning from Phoenix, Arizona. It's hot down here. Yeah, you're in the desert. So there's that. Uh, Pop Tart will be praying for the situation. Thank you. My name is nobody. How come nobody is at the TIA conference this week? I don't know. Good question. Are you there? Are you going to be there? Uh, robotics and AI everywhere. Yep. Amazon. Yeah, I mean, look, Amazon's tech savvy, man. They'll they'll figure some things out. They went in there with a streamlined process, and then they're probably streamlining it even more. So, and and here's the other thing. Let me go back to that. So. Amazon, obviously, so we don't know the whole truth about that Amazon deal with, uh, who was it? Um, oh, I think it was uh, that Swiss port. Yeah, Swiss port. We don't know if Swiss port up their rates, which, you know, would be understandable because, you know, costs have gone up for them. We don't know if they had too many contract failures because any of you doing the Amazon relay stuff knows that you can't have too many screw ups, right? So th there could be that going on. I mean, we don't know the true nature of why Swiss Port Cargo lost. You know, was it Amazon's decision because of money, because of streamlining, because of performance, or all? maybe it's all the above? And that that's the challenge with contracts i can go out there and get a contract that require you know that moves five loads a week but if the drivers don't want to do it what good does that do or if they're if they have horrible performance what good is that you know and then the bottom line is sometimes it you know price goes over performance and a perfect example is the bass pro thing again so one of the distribution centers that we handled with bass pro was the one in macon georgia that was an easy run take about ten thousand pounds from springfield taking down to macon georgia and drop and hook down there and it was an easy run and when Warner took it over, they were transitioning. And so when we were coming in, the employees, the gate, gate, the guards were like complaining about these Werner drivers. Now I'm not bashing Werner here, but I'm just saying that they could tell that, you know, the, the, and they were primarily putting the trainers on those runs because to get from Springfield to Macon, Georgia on paper, you can make it in one shift, but for the, reality wise you 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 know especially after electronic logs you, you it, it took a second shift to do it so you would do 90 percent of the run and you had to stop short of atlanta because obviously there's no park in atlanta so the majority of us were stopping north of atlanta and then finishing off the next day and it was a tight run because they didn't want their trailers out there for more than 24 hours but see, Werner came in and said, we can put teams on this. And what they did is they put the trainers with the trainees there. And next thing you know, the, the gate was being taken out. Trailers were being hit. They were using it like a trailer training facility. And Bass Pro, absolutely, the employees hated the fact that they, they were losing us in the contract. But it didn't matter. Mr. Johnny Moore said, we need to tighten the belt. We need to just have an efficient one system they they weren't looking at the details like the driver performance or the the damage to the gates or the late loads because you know they had new drivers that didn't know how to schedule themselves or stolen loads because they tried to park in the middle of atlanta with with expensive bass pro stuff so i mean so, so sometimes it's all about the bottom line and obviously that's you know, possibly what happened with the Swissport cargo deal. 
I mean, no carriers are doing live feeds from the TIA conference. That was an opportunity to gain deeper insight and understanding to brokers. Most people, most people running the spot market don't even know what TIA is, CDN. I know that you've mentioned them a few times here and talked about it, but for the most part, you, you, most carriers are just trying to survive right now. Uh, Jack Knife says, well, they already switched out from a no-name can frozen container carrier to JB Hunt to now KLM all within a year. Yeah, so that means they're trying to cut costs, and you got carriers trying to undercut. I had a friend of mine that did the KLM uh, craft account, um, and then he also did the Tyson account. And a lot of, like, a lot of BS with the Tyson account. That's what he always told me. CNN, I looked at going sold out from what I could see. Oh, wow. Okay. Quick hit is waving. I believe it was the one-year requirement when low-capacity finance companies um, got cut short there. My daughter bought her new – my daughter – Pop-Tart says my daughter bought her a new Cadillac Escalade. ESV and I have a bull that turned his attention on her vehicle as he was lifting her car up the ground trying to flip it over. We were wrong. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. And she's suing you over that? Uh, my brokerage management team is at the TIA. The freight coach, also an agent at my brokerage, is there. Chris interviewed Green Screens AI. I want to watch that. I want to watch that because. Uh, 123 Low Board works with uh, green screens. So that, that'll that be very, very good uh, interview there. David Edwards, good morning. Uh, we moved in front of the end, and my husband needed a tractor from behind the shop. My daughter was inside working. We had the vehicle removed, and it is in rally. Jackknife says, you know, I actually looked up the TIA conference and saw it was out of Phoenix, and I was like, man, I would have liked going. So relationship and professionalism either means everything or nothing. No wonder we're, we're a bit nuts in trucking. It, th that's true, CB. And so that's why I tell people the ability to adapt and overcome is, is probably your most important ability. And, and you can look at the history of UPS and Schneider and, and J.B. Hunt and how, how these guys started their trucks from – you know, companies from one truck, one or two trucks, and how they grew and how they adapted to every economic situation we've had in the last 50 years. You know, the regulation changes, you know. I mean, think about there was a time where you didn't have blog books and the Teamsters were like, no, we need some regulations because it's all like Wild West out here. And that's when they came up with it. So, I mean, it, it's, you know, look, the government – their goal is to control interstate commerce. And it's getting closer and closer to that every single day. And you have to know where you can find opportunity in that. So, but you're right, CB. Relationships and professionalism either means everything or nothing. And it, it's, that's the reality. You can do everything, and you know and that's life in general. You can do everything right. You can be the hardest working person. You're the cleanest truck driver. You've got the, you've got the, um, you know, most professional attitude. At the end of the day, it's like, wow, this guy will do it. Who's, you know, a reject? He'll do it for five cents a mile cheaper. I'm gonna go with that guy. Now, do they regret it sometimes and they go back? Yeah. And that, that was what we were saying at my company. We were like, oh, we're going to get this contract back. Werner's going to screw this up. And they were. But we never got it back. To this day, I think Werner still does the majority of their freight in there. So, I mean, that's the reality of business. You know, it's, it's like if you find yourself using the word fair all the time – you've got some harsh realities because nothing in life is fair. What's fair for the lion is not fair for the gazelle. Right. And and that's how business is. So pale rider TV coffee time. It is, uh, it's a big mess. It took us all of our lives to get her, get to her, this car and it's destroyed now. 
Yes, sir, we are responsible for this. Uh, Pale Rider, Shadow Wolf, he agrees with you. James C., good morning. Hope you're doing well. Go explore around the Transportation Intermediaries Association. There's the website. There you go. I have videos of that, but, I, but I'm dealing with the insurance and my property and probably going to be a headache. It, it will be. Relationships don't mean nothing if you're still profiting more and able to pay for your multi-million dollar mansion as a CEO of Bass Pro Shop. Well, here's the thing. So a lot of people justify the fact that contracts go bad or relationships go bad to never do them, right? A lot of people are like, well, broker relationships don't matter, so why even try? I don't know, maybe to make your life easier for about six months. And if if the relationship goes sour on their end, then obviously you weren't that important. You don't want to deal with that person anyways. But it it, it never hurts to try unless they keep lowering and lowering and lowering the rate. Then it becomes a problem. But see, the, the broker has the same the same goals you do, to profit as much as I can, to reduce the cost as much as I can. The shipper, the direct shipper you might have, same thing. Now, there's fuel surcharge, you know, fluctuations. But other than that, you know, a lot of, a lot of carriers and, and a lot of, well, a lot of brokers, too, they get greedy. You know, they, 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 they keep either increasing the rate or decreasing the rate. Hey, I've been doing this for a year at $2 a mile. My, I think it's time for a raise. We're at, we need to be at 210 now. And the shipper's going to be like, okay, well, Werner can do it for buck eighty. See ya. Thanks for your service. Right? And and that that that's the reality of business. It's it's always been like that. Always since day one. And as we head into corporatism that's taken over capitalism, it's it's gonna get worse and worse. And so you gotta be on your toes, you gotta be ready. You know, how strong is let's say you're a small carrier with a contract with a small shipper. How how strong is that shipper's business like if are they selling luxury items they might be struggling right now have their costs doubled on materials you know the first thing they take it out is in transportation and we haven't even got to what the original title of this video is uh, my daughter's not wrong and her daddy is going to make it right well there you go here is directory. Uh, you are not entitled to anything except what you are willing to develop and work for. There you go, Randy. Randy's is is got the good a good mindset. He's one of the few drivers I know that 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 gets it, and he hasn't been driving that long. You know, he's he's what you're at five or six years, and he's already figured a lot of things out that some fifteen year veterans are just now figuring out. So. Here's the TIA directory of members. Each broker is approved by board via application process and review. Search brokers by state or city. Can you bump the gain up of touch? It's hard to hear you over my turbos. <laughs> uh, I would hire myself. Very few people are smart. Ignorance is bliss. Are you saying you're the smartest person you know, Marnie? Uh, this is... This is how you find brokers with freight not on low boards. And there you go. There's there's your uh, deal there. That's absolutely true, Snow Alert. You just got to be able to find the honey hole where there's a group that doesn't think like that. Got to think there's three, maybe four businesses with their hands in the cookie jar before it gets to you as an owner-operator. And every one of these companies are trying to keep a bigger cut. She's so upset with him, but I'm worried too, says Pop-Tart. There's also competition with inside companies. For instance, sales bonuses, transportation bonuses, et cetera. Managers will make quick decisions over money, right? Pop-Tart says, I never thought I would be dealing with anything like this. We never do. Five and a half years, Randy's been driving. Uh, 
My husband got Elmo two big bells, so we know where he is for now on. Uh, Morning Snow Lord says there's a Desert Oak Pam. Hope you're doing okay. I noticed the Arizona market's being kind of weird more than normal, so. Uh, James says, I have a seasonal contract with the shipper. There's no guarantee of volume in the contract. Yeah, you know, and so so the difficulty with that, James, I would think, I, I don't know, I'm just assuming here because, you know, I'm an ass, um, that it would be difficult to invest in equipment and a second or third driver based off the lack of guarantee of volume. And if it's, and if that sh shipper is agricultural, well, then you got the weather conditions to, to deal with as well. Like, will they have a good, will they have a good crop this year? And that would be very challenging. So when you think of the depth of that, you got people out there still going, well, I ain't touching this truck for more than, for less than X amount dollar per mile. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. I would hire myself on a silver platter and twice on Sunday. <laughs> Study your competition. If they are cheaper, how do you get lower your, how do you lower your costs and can you offer a service nobody is doing? How hard are you willing to train work to be different? You know, you talk to DIY, he's got some direct shippers, and that's why I see him in a truck more often than not, because he's doing everything he can to service his customers. I've learned a lot from him. Uh, Randy, here in the chat, he's made some sacrifices for like trucking to make sure that, you know, we get some, we get some really good freight out of some really bad areas. You know, and, and we're constantly working on that. It's difficult in this economic condition. Uh, environment, I, I guess, is a better term. So, so. Anyways. All right. So, would you hire yourself? So, we're going to get the one, two, three low board up here. And we're going to take a look at some freight in different areas. Let's look at uh, load availability. Switch this to van. Now we touched on this the other day, but let's say, let's say you're in Colorado here, right? You got a good paying load to go in. And let's say that I've hired you and put you in my truck. And I sit here and, and I go, hey, uh, sit tight, get comfortable at truck stop because, man, I ain't moving that truck for less than $2 a mile. And, and, I, and I'm stuck. You know, so next thing you know, you're sitting for two days because if you notice, there's nothing two dollars above two dollars a mile here. I've got this on highest rate, dollar thirty nine, bunch of dollar thirty nines, dollar twenty nine, dollar thirty three, dollar thirty three, dollar forty three. Right? Let's say I, I'm paying my driver by the mile, so I got to have a certain number. Now, if the single owner operator cost on the average, according to some experts, is about two twenty five a mile, where's the room for a competitive wage for a company driver? You know, there's a lot of companies out there, a lot of mom and pop companies out there making their drivers unplug their ELDs and make them do stuff that they shouldn't and can't be doing. And because you know, sometimes drivers are desperate, they'll do it because they don't want to lose their job 
or maybe this is the only company that would hire them or maybe or maybe they just don't know any better they they just think that that's normal that's why these companies love new drivers because they can mold them in, into the what they think that they should be doing and and so back to my truck if you if 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 i make you sit for two or three days you probably wouldn't want to work for me anymore you'd probably take my you know tell tell call me up and tell me to take my truck and shove it up somewhere because you weren't making any money now if i paid you hourly just by sitting in the truck that would be different right you'd be like okay well i don't have to drive for my money or if you were paying salary like an annual salary that might be different, but then my costs go through the roof on that anytime I don't move move the truck. So what would I always do? Move the truck. You know, there's a lot of 1099 positions out there that the, tr the driver is not the owner operator. And, You know, are you making percentage of load? Are you getting paid by the mile? Are you choosing where you go? Now you can sit there and say, well, I'm going to be different. I'm going to be a, I'm going to hire somebody to drive my company truck, but I'm going to let them choose the loads off the load boards. Well, they're going to choose for the most part, easy loads that they like to do. Now, some might have the mindset that, okay, well, the truck has got a profit, so I got to pay attention to that. But most won't, you know, if you tell them if, 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 if there's a load that goes to Chicago, like inner city Chicago, that's more profitable than, than the easy load to Columbus, Ohio. And they're like, well, I ain't going to Chicago. And, and the, the easy load to, to Columbus is like 10 cents below profit for the truck more than likely that company driver is going to take the Columbus load unless they truly care about the person that's put them in the truck, which you know, nine times out of 10 people don't care. And, and so, but yet, so, so in a employer employee relationship of that, Does that work? Probably not. But yet I see owner operators doing that to themselves every single time. Randy and I have this, this game. How many times can we say in a conversation, I don't understand that. I don't understand why. And that was one of the realities I had to come with, up with when I was driving my truck is like, would I hire me? Would I want me to like could i could i am would i be a good employee to someone else with the way i was running probably not because the truck has to make money and so if you're doing that to yourself and you're not making any money and then you know now you're blaming market conditions that 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 that, that doesn't fare well fare well so as cdn pop you know pointed out study your competition so let's say you do know a person that owns two trucks and they have a company driver and they're succeeding they're doing it they're making it talk to them say hey man how are you doing this how are you pulling this off because i would like to do what you're doing what is your secret and maybe they won't reveal the secret, but they might say something along the lines of, well, I just did this and this. Or you, they might reveal a reality. Well, it's <laughs> this customer, if they if they ax me like Amazon did to Swissboro, man, I'm screwed. And then you have to recognize that, okay, well, maybe not put myself in that position. Maybe this guy is not got it together as much as I thought. So... you have to analyze yourself, your own business. Like, okay, so let's go to accounting. If, if I was an accountant 
like the guy keeping track of of truck expenses for someone, they would probably fire me because I'm not, I haven't been great at it. I've been good. I've improved. But like this, this you know, 2023, I wasn't keeping track of anything. I had a rough idea, but, you know, I was being a loser. <laughs> I was being, I was being, I was being dumb, right? And, 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 and the ability to be honest with yourself, to figure out what you want to do, how you need to do it is important. Would you hire you? You know, would you hire somebody that's rude to brokers when they're booking their freight? Well, then you shouldn't be the guy that's rude to the brokers when you're booking freight. And that that's something to keep in mind as you're, let's say you're new and you're starting out. If you want to think about, you want to think about become an owner operator. Well, what would, what, if you own the truck, what would you need that driver to do? If you were, if you're a truck driver, let's say you're a company driver, what do you need the owner to do? You need the owner to know his, know their cost. Like one time I, years ago, I had someone message me on, on Facebook messenger and the guy was, the guy was not a truck driver, but he had money and he bought a truck and trailer, had his, you know, start his authority and put a driver in, in the truck. And he, he texted me going, I don't know what to do. I'm like, well, what's your estimated cost per mile? What's your plan? And he didn't have one. He didn't know. And, and the first thought was, man, this poor driver, he's literally relying on somebody for him, for this guy to pay his bills and feed his family. He's relying on someone that literally doesn't know what they're doing. Now, could he learn? Absolutely. But how, how long can he survive that learning curve? It, you know, everybody makes fun of the, the Prime or the Snyder leases, but at least, at least when they go, hey, you want to lease a truck? They, they can give you a small business plan. They can give you a pool of trailers, a pool of freight that you can pick from. There's no question of where the money's coming from. And so are you the owner that you would want to work for? That's the other thing. Are you the owner that you would want to work for? Or are you the driver that you would, that, that you would hire? It's, it, <laughs> it's a catchphrase. It's as simple as that. And if, if not, then you need to fix those things. You know, there, there are company drivers that I know that would be perfect owner operators and they have zero interest in it, but they treat the truck like it's theirs. They are concerned about, you know, I'm not going to idle too much because I want my company to make money. I'm going to let the, let the company know when there's something wrong with the truck. I'm not going to gripe. I'm not going to be a chihuahua to my dispatcher. And then you have owner ops that refuse to do anything for themselves to do anything for the brokers, to do anything for their business, including fixing their truck, fixing a light bulb, making sure a tire isn't too worn down. And these are the questions that you need to go through your head because there's a lot of people that I see barely making it. Now there are external circumstances like the market and, and, uh, cost cost is the big thing. 
You know, rates are fairly reasonable if your costs are down. You know, one of our drivers just recently reduced his truck payment by $4,000 a month. And he's been doing okay with the high cost. He's like, you know what? He, he's going to be all right in this. And he's got a great team of mentorship to help him through it. And that was one of the first things we told him. I said, you need to reduce your cost, man. Because it's, it's a difficult environment right now. Because if, if your tolls and your, your labor and your parts are 30 40% higher than they were two years ago, well, where can you shave the money? Off the truck payment. Off your fuel. You know, keep your, keep your right foot behaving. Picking smarter loads. Not grabbing 45,000 pounds that goes from a bad market like Pennsylvania all the way to Washington to come out of another bad market. With another 45,000 pounds, your net per day becomes what? Two, $300 at times a day? Your truck ain't going to survive off that. Not with the wear and tear you're doing by doing those long-distance runs like that. And here's the blessing. The blessing is, is if you survive this environment, you are going to be strong. It's making you stronger. It is my past experiences with down markets that's enabled me to adapt and and strategize and look at things and, and, and come up with new perspectives. Because as, as we pointed out earlier in this feed, it's always changing. Certainty and freight does not exist. The only certainty that you have is that it's always changing. That's it. That, that, that's the only thing set. Let's go to the comments here. Oh, you guys have been... Oh, crazy. T-Bone, good morning. Weird, no notification. Nope. Yeah, I know. Same thing. I never did get my notification. Uh, Sage says this is a great topic. CDN says unless you bought plain truck, most owner ops won't let other drivers drive your truck. You have said it before that you would sell your truck before hiring a driver. Right, because it would have to be someone I really trusted that would take care of it. Two of those people are, are safety managers now, and one person retired. That's it. That, that's the short list. I don't have the gonads <laughs> to put people in trucks. Other people do. That's for them. Because I've seen how horrible it gets. And I, I'd rather take my risk uh, elsewhere. Popstar says when it comes to business sense... Good sense is to keep the net as close to the gross as you can get. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make sense if you, if, if just everything going out. Tolga says, salute to all. Sage says, I'd like to have you do a show on X with me about this. We could. I'm not the smartest girl, but I can't live off gross. Uh, would I hire me? Detachable at times. Debatable at times. <laughs> Same. I, I'm Look, I'm no perfect goose. Mr. Charles, good morning. Step one, write your job description, qualifications, duties, goals per quarter. Uh, Marty says, rates this exact same time next year will be down from the year now. My prediction. It's possible. Uh, the first three years as a company driver, I ran the trucks as my own with whatever info and data I could get from the companies. Know your numbers. Right. 
So Randy was paying attention to uh, cost of repairs, how often the trucks needed to maintain. Um, he was paying attention to all that stuff. And that's one of the good things about the 123 low board is you don't need an MC number to, to be subscribed to it. David, you're going to send me an email this morning. Cool. Must be 8 o'clock. My phone's going out, going nuts. I like that. Are you the owner you would work for? Right? Okay. Quick hit, what's up? He likes that. I have to focus on the numbers I see coming in and that money I have to move it around so I'm not paying excessive taxes, etc. cetera. Uh, going from owner-operator driver to manager hiring one or more drivers is a whole new skill set. Usually you bought a truck to get away from bad dispatchers and management. What, what are you different now? Right. I mean, that's why I bought my truck because I wanted to choose where I wanted to go. I wanted the ability because I had a scare. My, my daughter was put in the hospital. And my dispatcher, who was the VP at the company at the time, filling in for the dispatcher that just quit, was like, I'm like, hey, we, we were taking a load of steel from Joplin to uh, Tennessee, right outside of Knoxville. And we get there, and this, this plant in Tennessee was notorious for rejecting our loads Re every single time. Too much iron content. So I backed the dock, and sure enough, hey, driver, we're rejecting your load. Here's the thing. They hand me a piece of paper. Call your dispatcher. Get the hell out. So we drove. I had a trainee with me, too. We drove to uh, Knoxville, the Petro there. And it was around that time that that my wife called and says, our daughter's in the hospital. Checked in. So I called the company and said, hey, they reject this load. Normally we bring these right back to the yard. We need to do that because my daughter's in the hospital. Well, we're going to see what we can do. Um, just hold tight. Um, we'll see if we can't, you know, get it delivered somewhere else. I said, no, you don't understand. I need to go home. And since I got a trainee with me, we can make it to the, to the yard. We need to be at the yard today. Well, you know, I, I, well, you know, we'll see. Just, just hang tight. And I literally sat in that truck for two hours just thinking, okay, this is not cool. Now, I understand the logistics of, you know, the driver having to be home. Luckily, I wasn't. You know, here's the thing. If I was under a load, I'd be understandable. It wasn't a life or death situation, but it was enough that I needed to be home. And... So it just happened. It, this is perfect. Don't put me in a situation that I can't get out of where I couldn't get home. We, we have an opportunity to go home now. And so he called back two hours later and said, okay, yeah, go ahead and bring it to the yard. Drop it there. Let me know when you need to, when you want to come back out. Like he was doing me a favor. And that was when I had to say, you know what? You know, a friend of mine was telling me about his buddy at Landstar. And, and I was like, you know what? I think it's time to make the plunge. It's just it, we'd already been thinking about it, but that cemented it. Uh, Pop Tart says people also need to pay attention to safety violations. Insurance well put you out of business, so you have to be careful who's working for you. Exactly. Are you driving like the person that you would want driving for you? Would you want to hire someone that's always curbing the trailer? Would you want, would you hire someone that's, oh, let, that tire's okay. We'll be all right. I don't know why there's black rubber, you know, being frayed behind me. I don't know what that's about. No, you wouldn't want to hire somebody like that. Uh, soy, soy six, mafia. Uh, I'm going to survive this environment, but I'm not working very much because I ran my ass off when it was good. There you go. I know many successful people that that was the key, right? They were able to take it easy right now. 
Uh, they should bring back a form of regulation that each state can only have so many authorities. Mm, I don't know about that. Because that will fluctuate. You know, one year you need as many trucks as you can possibly get. Another year you've got too many trucks. It's just how the cycle is. And, you know, look, it's tempting to sit there and say that's a good idea because, like, here locally in Springfield, there are a bunch of these uh, coffee places. I forget what – I even forget what they're named. There's, like – there's an overabundance of this coffee place and the, the car washes. And if I was a car wash owner, I'd be mad because there's, like – three car washes for every mile of Springfield. So yeah, you're going to sit there and say, well, they should regulate how many car washes are in a, you know, city of so many thousands of people. So CN says, then should, then who should do those 45,000 pound loads from a bad market to bad market? Someone needs to that product. Megas. Well, I mean, obviously they're being moved. A lot of them are going by rail. So there's that. Another new trailer to welfare wagon. Notification system is broken again since two days. At least it's like that for me. Right. That's why I try to go live at 7 a.m. So those of you know that I go live around this time, just show up. Good morning, Rome Land. Everybody saying hi to each other. Jackknife, I'm a bad employee. I would have drove home. Put it this way. My wife has been the manager of two large retail stores, different companies, and here's what the, what they say we schedule for the store's benefit, not for the employees, right? These people are not your friends. They are a tool that keeps the shelf stocked and aisles clean, right? And it's tough hiring. You know, I, I know people that have put friends in trucks and it, it goes sour pretty quickly. You know, I, I had someone give me some good advice one time, uh, about being in business with friends. It, it, it's a tough situation. You know, some people can do it. Some people can't, you know, it depends on the maturity of, of both parties. Cents per mile, 478 a mile legal load, Minnesota and Massachusetts. Time to hit the chrome shop. <laughs> wow. How many stops is on that? There's good freight out there. It really is. It's just it takes a little bit longer. What do you do between the good freight? You know? So. Um I know he doesn't like me to mention him, but Big Rig CEO, he he did a great video about the Moneyball approach. Not every not every hit's got to be a home run. So I would I would encourage you to check it out. One pick, one drop. Look at you, cents per mile. Man, how'd you score that? Wait, don't tell us because everybody then that'll be cut in half. So. But that, that's just the six, uh, <laughs> dude. That that's beyond the home run. That's a lottery winner right there. That's a lottery winner. Unless it's a drop trailer for thirty days. I had I looked at a load on the bo low board the other yesterday. As a matter of fact, it was literally like a thousand dollars over the 30 day. And I'm like, Oh, I wonder why there's so much money on it. And I looked at it and it was like drop trailer for up to 39 days. Um, no, it, it, it wasn't even like $50 a day. If you, if you did the full 39 days, like, why would you do that? Like who's trying to broker that out? Right, that, that you just need to call Snyder and 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 use them in their drop and hook system. Why would you even try to put that on the spot market? Randy's going back to the Northeast. Twenty one drops. I know what I'm doing for the next twelve days. There you go. 
And I bet you his daily rate is is as good as it's better than whatever else is out there right now. Uh, live unload at a crane yard. I set delivery date. There you go. Your freight is important. You're not just moving a bottle bottled water out of Niagara. Uh, you must make the bar to entry slightly higher instead of three hundred dollars to get your authority. Make it a thousand or three thousand. Anybody that's approved at Lone Mountain and has a credit card can get their authority. So, so let's talk about that. So, instead of regulating that, guess what? The private companies are going to regulate that. The brokers are going to regulate that. They don't want the government doing it for them. They want to control the market. So, if the bar is the same for anybody to get their own authority... If the brokers make it easy to use them with as a new authority, then obviously they can get more capacity. But if it but if they if there's too many trucks and they don't have enough freight, the last thing they want is too many authorities. Right? Because it kills the whole field. So the insurance companies regulate that. The brokerages regulate that. And again, you can get your own authority and never touch a broker load. Ever. Don't 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 check the ICC pumper. It's hollow and and might it be empty. I don't, know what, I don't know what that means. Drop trailer is always a risk. It is. I, I've only done one. And it was literally because it was convenient and I was going home for the weekend. And I still lost a day because the trailer wasn't ready till Tuesday. I couldn't book anything ahead of time. We don't talk about our honey holes no more. No, we don't. Story, I'm talking about common decency, like giving people off to get their kids and things like that. Two days can turn in 30. Yeah, Charles went through that last year and had to go after him. Had to go after the broker for that. It's always been hard for her to keep employees when you have a company behind you trying to do stuff like that. It is. Look. I've talked to people that used to have employees in other circumstances and they would not do it again. <laughs> it's tough in the trucking world, really. It, it really is. You really have to trust the people that you put in the truck if you've got a lot more to lose if something goes sour. If Schneider puts the wrong person in a truck it and it goes sour, yeah, you know, barring a, some kind of nuclear verdict on something extreme, they can pretty much handle what, what comes at them. And if it gets too high, the pencil pushers will say, don't do that anymore. And you'll see that, like, in this kind of market, you'll see companies that used to take CDL students that won't take you, take you unless you got two years' experience now. You know, there, there's a lot of – so they, they self-regulate. When they need the drivers, they'll lower their standards. When they don't need the drivers, they up their standards. But a small carrier – has to have higher standards regardless of the market conditions, especially in a bad market, because there's no room for error. Pop-Tart says, I'm going to go out on a limb here hiring people. People are a bunch of nothing, um, 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 playing living off everyone else, so you have to be able to call it how it's going to be hiring people. Having empathy and understanding for your employees is important because that's the thing. Sometimes a disgruntled employee, I'm not saying this is what happened with you. I'm just saying I'm talking about some drivers in the past that I've known. Sometimes it's it's the, like, again, would you be the owner op you would want to work for? And so, you know, think about this. You're sitting at a truck stop. You've been sitting for two days. Your wife's mad because you haven't been home for three months. And you're not being able to pay the bills 
and you're sitting there for three days at a truck stop just eating bad food, dwelling on everything, becoming a narcissist because you're, you're entrapped in your cage while everybody else is working and being happy, there's a point where you're going to snap, right? And you're, you're going to tell that, that boss, you know, take this truck and shove it. I'm not dealing with this anymore. And if you're under a lease and you're in those conditions, then they're going to go, well, we're going to take $12,000 from you. And so you, you're, you sit there and you take it because you're in this debt that you think that you have. And one day you reach a boiling point and, and when you give the truck back, it's trash. You've cut the seats up torn off cabinets you you took the mirrors off of it you know that kind of thing that's the risk you take that's why you gotta vet and trust the people that you put in the trucks pop tart says you hire a drunk what do you think is going to happen if you put one in a commercial vehicle yep I, i've seen that Plenty of times. That's kind of true there, Snow Alert. I never thought of it that way. Although usually by the time that happens, it's already too late and things are way out of control. You hire a drug addict, what do you think is going to happen with that one? Randy says, coming from construction business, I had 35 associates would not want to do that in today's environment. Especially with all the entitlement that's going on, right? So, all right, let's take a look at, uh, that's your van. You know, pretty much the same story. Arkansas is green. Let's take a look at them. We'll, we'll do the low board stuff for a minute. Guys, hit the like. Hit the thumbs up. Um, there's information to support the channel. Uh, 48065 is the code for 123. And then the link for the coffee is in the description. I also promote... Um, truck and pro put in the code SA 10 and you can be able to track your numbers on your computer and, um, know what your business is doing down to the 10th of a cent. So, all right. Highest paying load out of Arkansas is overall rate. Whoops. No, that's the wrong one. Wrong filter. 4200 to go to Oregon. That's interesting because that's, you know, we're barely seeing anything breaking $2 a mile to go out west. So let's see what's going on with this load. Picks up at 7 a.m. Monday. Delivers Wednesday. Or wait, no. Thursday, sorry. Wednesday seems, that'd be tight. Nothing special about it, at least not in the description. That's interesting. There's got to be something to that because this load, Russellville to Portland, similar load, it's at $1.85 a mile uh, for more miles. So Utah, $2, $2.20 to go to Utah, uh, 201 to go to Uxbridge. That's low. Let's take a look at this one. Why is it low, Steve? What makes it low? Well, let's look at the cost. You got 43,000 pounds. And you got $140 in tolls. Special requirements, dry van, food grade. If the trailer has any damages, shipper will not load the truck. If trucks must be food grade containers, no leaks, no holes, no odors, no grass, or any other objects that can get into the food. So they're at 2802. Cargo Chiefs got it at 33, so a little bit higher. I would want to go higher to cover these toll costs at least. And it's rice, so it is going to be heavy. So that's probably, yeah, it's coming out of Stuttgart. So that's Riceland. Not the easiest place to load in the past. 
Um, they had a really rude, like years and this is years ago. They had a really rude um, scale master there. Hope, Arkansas, to Tolleson, Arizona. Somebody was asking me about going out to Arizona yesterday. Oh yeah, it was it's our new guy. 203 a mile. That's actually pretty good going out to Arizona from Arkansas. Let's take a look at this one. Here lately, Arizona runs have been about a buck eighty to a buck ninety-five. Yeah, they're definitely above what the app see I was right. So Cargo Chiefs got this at one ninety one. It's been as low as a buck sixty nine, which I wouldn't do that. Um, freight all kinds, twenty dollars. No, tolls should be about, no, there's no tolls on this one. You go straight across 40 there. There's a few of those later this month. $1.95 to go to Jersey from Stuttgart. Ugh. That's ugly. That is super ugly. Still says it's above my cost per day, but 43,000 pounds, your fuel's going to be high. Strict trailer, and let's see. It says zero toll cost, so that's interesting. So that, you know, that may not be too bad, but getting out of Jersey is you're looking at a buck 40, buck 50 to get out going long. Of course, a lot of stuff going to Arizona for about seventy, buck eighty. So let's go to let's go to highest rate. This is out of Arkansas to anywhere. Rate per mile. Let's do rate per mile. See where the shorties are going. Mississippi, Olive Branch. A lot of stuff going to Mississippi. Clarksville to Tulsa, four hundred two a mile, seven hundred bucks. I would do this. Because out of Tulsa, you can grab something out of either Tulsa or Joplin that goes up to northern Missouri. It says weight is 200 pounds, 30-foot tube. But they're not too far off of what this lane's been selling for. Uh, Mississippi, Oklahoma. So apparently... Okay, so your highest rate per mile is two on the longer run is two sixty six a mile going from Arkansas to Medley, Florida. And then you got some short runs going to Dallas. Here's Hot Springs to Abilene, forty two on the weight, so you don't have to worry about the wind out there, and it's fairly flat, so you're not too bad on your fuel once you get out of Arkansas. On a nine hour drive. Picks up Tuesday at noon. Delivers the next day at 8 a.m. 466 miles. That's not a bad run for a day. But then Abilene is going to be a bit of a struggle. There's four, though, going from right from Texas to Arkansas. So now you're deadheading to Dallas, which is quite quite a bit of a drive, especially for that rate going back to Arkansas there. So is there Abilene anywhere? Let's take a look at that. Sort by highest rate. Yeah, see... Dollar forties and fifties to go long, or dollar thirty, dollar twenty to get back to the Midwest out of Abilene. So your best bet is like this Abilene and Duncan, Oklahoma, then that would put you in the Dallas market. But that's six hundred and fifty dollars for the day. So but if it's going to Duncan, more likely it's uh, family dollar. And you can spend the night there. Used to have a street that you can park there overnight. But they aren't the quickest unloaders there. 
And then this plain view, that's probably Walmart. And a lot of Texas to Texas, which you may not be able to do if you don't have Texas Interstate, which is expensive. All right, if you're a small carrier. So, a thousand ways to skin, right? A thousand ways to do this. All right, let's take a look at reefer. All right. It's best to let the truck sit before hiring a fruitcake road wagon on your insurance. <laughs> uh, Jack, Jack and I says, when I hired two drivers, they were 15 and 25 years older than I was and had 20 to 30 years experience. They would actually step in and run themselves and try making business decisions on my behalf. Well, good. What happened to that? Things change, right? If you stay ready, then you don't have to get ready. That's true. I think Soul Cow says that all the time. Which, for the most part, would be the same decisions I wanted to make. I didn't have to babysit them at all. Your equipment is your business card. That's true. My husband said he's going to put Pop-Tart Gone Trucking on our new welfare wagon. He thinks it's funny. Yeah, put the YouTube link up there. Uh, acceleration rules. What's the rate for nuclear radioactive loads? I have no idea. Uh, equipment prices are dropping. Yes, that is true. Enjoy your... All right, Pop-Tart, thanks for popping in. Ha! Just got off the back roads of Missouri. No thanks. <laughs> Were you on Highway 47? Now, the, the U.S. highways ain't too bad. You know, 65 is not too bad unless unless you're going south. Well, that's Arkansas then. You know, once you get south of Harrison, Arkansas, man, 65 is a is a it's a challenging run. Highway 39. <laughs> uh, at least you're not on. If look, if you see a state highway that's a letter, or worse yet, two letters. You might want to rethink that route. So, Let's see some reefer loads out of the northeast since any day now. Tyson might kick my butt out of here. So Ian says, great show, Steve. I have work to do. Thank you for coming in. Okay, so let's take Van out. I did that yesterday or Wednesday. I, I accidentally kept one in there. All right, let's look at PA. Let's say Tyson told Jackknife he's an a-hole and that they won't work with him anymore and they hate his guts. So now he's on the spot market. What is he expecting? Well, what's your cost per day, Jackknife? We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll adjust the cost per day just for you. What is it? What is your cost per day, Jackknife TV? Huh? I'll I'll give you a minute to figure it out. This will be a good experiment for Jackknife. We're going to pick on Jackknife for a minute. We're waiting, Jackknife. What's your cost per day for your truck? Because we don't know half these loads that are like six fifty, five hundred, you may not be able to even do those. Right? So let's say Jackknife wants to put some miles on his truck. So let's do the highest rate. Get our long haul stuff going. Well, I don't think Jackknife's gonna do a dollar thirty two or thirty four hundred bucks to go to California. So that one's out. That's literally these are literally the highest overall rates coming out of PA. A dollar five a mile to go out to California. 40,000 pounds. <laughs> That's funny. 99 cents. How low can we go? Brennigsville, PA to Portersville, California. 40,500 40, pounds. 99 cents a mile. That doesn't even cover my cost per day, which are fairly low because it's a van, right? So let's click on this load anyways. Let's 108% below my cost per day. <laughs> oh, man. I don't have an answer yet from Jackknife. So Jackknife, you probably can't do this load. 
So if I was to do this load with my truck operation, my profit per day would be negative $29. I'd be losing $30 a day. I'd be paying Gix Logistics $30 a day just to do this load for them. Look at the tolls, $267 in tolls. <laughs> I guarantee you that if you call on this load, this guy is going to be grumpy, guy or gal, because he's going to have drivers call him and read him the riot act. Would I do that? No, I wouldn't even call on this. Well, no, I take that back. If I did call on this, it would be the intention of figuring out how high could I get this person and why they're so low? But I would do it in a nice way. But there are sometimes you just tell a broker, good luck, man. Because even the cheapest carriers may may not think twice about leaving leaving this on the dock. So the broker is either getting ready to learn a hard lesson or he's got so much pressure that they have to move it for this, which is going to be... It's going to be a, it, it, it's not a good situation. It is wild. It is wild, what, Willie? Texas for $1.47. Oh, here you go. You can go to Miami for two eleven a mile, which Jackknife still hasn't put his cost per day up here yet to see if these are even profitable if Tyson gives them the boot. They've posted it for twenty four hundred Fox Logistics. Cargo Chief's got this at twenty seven eighty eight. Green Screens has got it from between twenty five and twenty one. And Ray checks at 21. It's even got the pickup number here, which it surprised me that they're putting that out there. Live call now. Call the lowest rate on the board. If you was going to Plano, Illinois to Wilton, New York, how much would you want? For a van or reefer? First, I'm going to go with the routing. So let's do the... Let's do a trip builder here. You can either put it here. So we'll put Plano, Illinois. To... Wilton, New York. Is that New York City? Is there a Wilton, New York? Oh, there it is. There. Uh, we put exclusive stakes. We don't need to do that. Uh, load by load. We'll just, we'll just do. We'll just keep it at that. Now, this is a new feature, so I'm not sure what's going on with this. Uh, let's do 45, 53, create. I wonder why it's not creating. So, well, that's not working right. So let's go to market rates then. Okay, so van going from Plano, Illinois. to Wilton, New York, which is outside of Albany. Thank you. Okay, we got, oh, we need to switch this to van here. Get right. Now, why did I hit click get right on this one? Because, number one, to make a decision what I would pr 
charge on this one, well, it's going to give me the toll cost, which is 245 bucks. We'll round it up. It's going to have me allow, allow me to look at the load, the amount of loads that are getting me to Wilt, New York, which is eight. But then right back to Plano, there's only one. But then this to anywhere, 170 loads and then 70. So it's not a bad market on volume for one, two, three low board. And so looking at $245 worth of tolls, see how many miles is this? Uh, 862. So that's two day run. So if I take my cost 360 a day times two, that's 720 on my raw cost. And then if we look at fuel, about $600 in fuel plus 600 is that the 1320 plus the tolls plus 245 in tolls equals 1565 and I break even on this load okay so That's on a daily rate. So fifteen sixty five divided by eight sixty two mileage rate, that's a dollar eighty one. So obviously this can be a profitable load, but I gotta get them you know, I would I would hit them for twenty four. Depending on what the rates were looking like coming out. So I can click on this view loads coming out of Wilton, New York. <laughs> it's not much. Like here's Saratoga Springs, New York to Galesburg, Michigan. I mean, there is, but they're not exactly going, you know, they've had to expand the radius back to Plano, Illinois. So obviously there's a few loads coming out of Syracuse going to Battle Creek, but that's probably going to be beer. I can click on one of them, see if they say the product. I know Baldwin's build is beer as well, right? But I would shoot high, depending on the market, right? Yeah, 83% below cost per day. So that has to come into the factor. So that's why I have to shoot high, because this is going to be below my cost per mile or cost per day. It's a load of paper, so obviously it's going to be heavy. So obviously looking at these rates, now here's a good rate going to Brazil, Indiana. Let's take a look at that. Governor of New York. Still below my cost per day, 18% below. So I want to add that 18% on the other load. And I want to do these two together. So I would probably try to get 16 for this. And then get the other one for 25. But I would look for something better because I don't want to deal with those tolls. So that's how you do that. 15,000 pounds. So that's good. That, that helps. That pads it, right? Uh, day 10 of truck being down. Dang, Don. That sucks, man. Hope it gets better. Jack Knife says, great show. You never did answer my cost per day to see if running reefer out of PA was going to be profitable for you or not. I would say Jack Knife's cost per day is $1,100. <laughs> Instead of losing money, negotiate the worst loads on the low board, on the board. Sometimes you, you have no choice but to do that, right? Especially when you're in a bad market. And then there's a point where you just, you know what, instead of paying $30 a day to do this load, maybe I just deadhead 
you know, 500 miles to get into a situation where I'm not giving that up. You know, there's strategic deadhead. We've talked about that before. I got 2,700, but I'll run around Indiana tolls and run around some New York tolls. There you go. That that keeps your net down. So you got 27. That's good. But oh, you made you had a phone call. Okay, with my authority, without your authority. Well, I imagine you want to start first. I don't know. It just depends. I mean, we just had a whole thing about how new truck authorities are going to struggle this year. So I don't know if I would even consider getting your own authority. Unless you've just made yours, you know, like unless you reinstated yours and got, you know, kept your time in it. But even then you don't have any inspections under that authority. Might take me a second. I have to recalculate everything because it's my it's on my laptop, which is at home. So let's do this, Jackknife. The next live feed, or maybe we'll do a separate interview on on StreamYard here, where you want to know whether it's going to be profitable for you at your cost to have your own authority and without your own authority living and working out of Pennsylvania with, with a reefer truck. How about that? Why don't we do that? I think that'll be a good experience for everybody. Don says, Mr. Dispatcher, got a solid way to make up for 10 days lost revenue in 7 to 10 days. Working through this weekend next week. Truck should be fixed today. Ah, yes. The dreaded word, should. I know. Give me a call. I'll, I'll call you after this feed. I got to use the bathroom, so give me a minute. But... um. But other than that, thanks for watching, guys. 48065 if you want to check out the 123 Low Board. Um, ContentCreatorCoffee.com. Type in Snow Alert in the search, and you'll find my Berserkers Brew. And anything else, get the thumbs up. I appreciate the memberships. And I did upload a members-only video. Haven't gotten a whole lot of feedback from it. so. But I appreciate you members. I appreciate the Super Chats. I appreciate everybody. Um you know so uh cents per mile says on your laptop this should be a number you know by heart yeah because it shouldn't change from what, that much from what it is now whatever your cost per day is now jackknife then you're going to have to add the insurance and the other costs if you have your own authority but i believe the original question is could you be profitable running reefer cuz do you own your own reefer trailer? If not, man, with that truck payment and the trailer reefer trailer payment, there's no way you're going to make any money coming out of PA unless unless you're doing some super sp secret spy stuff. Mark says, "Have a great day, everyone. Love you all." Mine was around a dollar seventy mile or seven hundred per day. There you go. Don knows it. So, with that being said, thanks for watching. Strength for today, hope for tomorrow. Have a great weekend. If you're running, be safe. If you're at home, enjoy your home time because that's what's, family is what's important, family and friends. So, with that being said, peace. Bang your head. Go.